Lars Teeny Reviews presents a Game of Thrones discussion video, Season 6 Predictions and Possibilities. Hello, thank you for tuning in. My name is Lars Teeny, and I'm a self-published author and fan of George R.R. R. Martin's A Song of Ice and Fire book series, as well as an on-again, off-again fan of the show. This is a video where I would like to discuss my predictions for Season 6 and other possibilities. Just a warning, this video might contain book and show spoilers, so you have been warned. So, let's just be honest with ourselves. First and foremost, Game of Thrones mostly has just been a big budget fan fiction production. Dave and Dan have changed so much from the book that the show's story has gone off on huge tangents and misadventures. Sand snakes, anyone? Maybe Dave and Dan are just trying not to spoil the book for the book readers, or maybe they are catering to their tar target audience. But one thing I do have high hopes for is that Season 6 will mirror Season 1 in quality. After the travesty of Season 5, I think that is the least they can do. At any rate, the end of Season 5 is caught up where the books have left off, so we are in uncharted territory. First up, there is Jon Snow's fate, which seems to be final. I mean, who could really survive all those daggers, right? So his body is obviously dead. But of course, there is magic, and there is the Lord of Light and Melisandre. There have been many predictions made that Melisandre will simply resurrect Jon, and he will be free to just go about his business of getting vengeance against the Watch. And then he could lead a uh, wildling army against uh, the Boltons at Winterfell and neatly clean that mess up. To me, all this seems too easy and obvious. I don't think that is how this will play out at all. If Melisandre does end up resurrecting Jon, I think the situation will be a, a bit more complicated. First, we have to look at Dave and Dan's track record of cutting out important characters and merging plenty of important characters together. Unless HBO slash Dave and Dan have been super sneaky and have convinced everybody that Lady Stoneheart has been cut out of this series and will not appear at all, and then suddenly, there she is in season 6, which I do not think will happen, then I predict, as one of the options that they will merge John with Lady Stoneheart's character. I mean, the show only needs two characters resurrected by the Lord of Light's powers. We know that they are planning to resurrect at least one of the starts in this manner since they have set up the Beric Dondarrion Thoros of Mirrors plotline, and if Stoneheart doesn't appear, then to me it would make sense that Jon Snow can absorb her purpose in the story. Maybe because Brienne is near Winterfell, she may have to uh, contend with Jon Snow's wrath in his capacity as uh, stepping in for uh, Lady Stoneheart. Of course, this may be completely wrong, and the show could uh, throw in Stoneheart when no one expects it. It would make sense to me if Jon's fate is somehow tied to the White Walkers in some capacity. I don't think the show will go so far as uh, making him the leader of the others, but maybe he will be contacted by Bran, who will be an intermediary of sorts in some sort of negotiated peace. Somehow I feel like Daenerys and the Dothraki will be the true threat of the books, if not the show, but I have no proof to back this prediction up. Next up, I would like to cover Arya. Last when we left her, she had gone blind in the House of Black and White. In the books, she is blinded, not out of punishment, but as part of her training as a faceless man. There is two ways her training can go. Either she proves too passionate and stubborn as a Stark to become a faceless man and has to escape Bravos, or she embraces the darkness and becomes no one. I think that just as Bran will become the next Three-Eyed Crow, I believe that Arya will become a faceless man. Now, since the show had included uh, Cersei's flashback to Maggie the Frog's prophecy, I believe that the prophecy will manifest itself in some way. In the books, the prophecy states, quote, And when your tears have drowned you, the Valonqar shall wrap his hands about your pale white throat and choke the life from you, end quote. Maggie the Frog to Cersei Lannister, A Feast for Crows, Chapter 36. So as some of you know, Valonqar is the Valyrian word for little brother. This fact has led me to believe that either Tyrion or Jaime will be the Valonqar, who will choke the life from Cersei's throat. And this may be partly true, but I think that it will actually be Arya as a faceless man disguised as either Tyrion or Jaime who does the nasty deed. Moving along to Essos and uh, Danny's situation, judging by set photos that have been leaked, it looks to be safe to predict that Danny will easily assume the mantle of Khaleesi of the massive Horde of Dothraki. 
probably with the help of Drogon or something. My prediction is that Dario Naharis is behind the Sons of the Harpy, and that Jorah Mormont will sacrifice his life to save Daenerys from Dario in some way, probably before she will have to uh, put him down before Jorah succumbs to his uh, grayscale that he doesn't get in the books. So, I have to be honest with you, Danny's story isn't my favorite of the books or the show, so I hope they move it along and get her to Westeros already. So to me, I don't think they will be able to wrap up the story in Season 6 or Season 7, so I believe that there will be an 8th season. So don't worry, Game of Thrones will not be going anywhere for some time to come. And lastly, I will be the first to admit that I may be wrong about all of this. So, let me know if you agree or have something to add in the comments. Please like the video and subscribe to my channel if you enjoyed the content. And as always, thank you for watching.